Hey guys, anybody that's subscribed to our channel or watches our channel knows we are absolutely obsessed with Civil War stuff and do a lot of research on it. The last skirmish of the Civil War actually happened only a few miles from where I live, close to Mumford, Alabama. We are headed there right now. That skirmish also resulted in the last known Confederate casualty of the war. That soldier today has been recovered. His body has been found, and he was found buried in the front yard of a house. We're headed there right now. I want to thank our friend Andrew Engel, who also watches the channel and has his own YouTube channel, for giving us the tip. We'll see you in the video. And you are the mayor, correct? Right. Right. Can you tell me your name again? Mayor Joanne Fambro. Yes, ma'am. It's it's and I was honor. raised here. And I, this was not taught in school. I didn't know anything about this until I got out of school. Right. So you didn't know he was there either? No. Unbelievable. I mean, there is a plaque there, and other citizens knew it, but I, I you know, I never knew the history of it. Yeah. I, I have located and found some pretty incredible Civil War relics, mm -hmm. thanks to yeah. friends like he mm -hmm. and friends over in Georgia and, and all over the South. And this is the only thing that, that you hear people say they're shaking when they find something yeah. incredible. They were tears. Wait, wait, this we, we wait, teared up. really crying. makes my hand shake. Well, I, I did too, and I called him, crying. and he was closer than I was. So, how did y'all, so, this, so this, we started the race car version to get here. Yeah, we did. I mean, how did you pick up on it? Well, two artillery pieces <laughs> set up right over here. They got off two shots. The, so the artillery is over in that area? Over, over on a hill over here. I wish, I wish, uh, I wish Mr. Here. We, uh, I, I've done a lot of research on this, and they actually captured that piece and had it with them and went on to Anniston. Yeah, uh, it's just been wonderful to work with uh, all the Munford officials and the mayor and the uh, University of Alabama archaeology team, the Alabama Historical Commission. Uh, everybody has just been. Uh, and we have to remember the. Owners of oh, property yes. Too, uh, because, uh, well, property you know, owners right over there. Reverend uh, Villanueva, uh, you know, uh, they've just been very gracious, uh, uh, granted us permission to uh, to uh, disinter him there. Right. And uh, just it's just been a, a very, very positive. Do we know the soldier's name? Lieutenant Andrew Jackson Butcher. Yeah, it's if, here. If That's you would like to, one of his oh. uh, ancestors yeah. is here. We can, uh, where is Ginger? I don't see her. Uh, and eventually the town would like to do a museum. In the yeah. Past. This, yeah. I think this would probably end up being the Mumford historical right. part. Yeah. Fourth great niece. Wow. Oh, wow. Her name is Ginger Buttram. She is the head of the uh, Buttram Facebook page and the head of the Buttram group. They're going to have a uh, family reunion in conjunction with the funeral in, uh, on April the 18th. So. I'll let y'all talk to her. Hey, yeah, tell her, please tell her who sir. you're with and what you're. What you go about. ahead. We're kind of the same. Yeah, uh, I'm from History Seekers, and uh, this is uh, Exploring Alabama. YouTube. Both of us have YouTube channels, and uh, we're focused around recovering historical artifacts and and telling the stories about you know soldiers' lives and that sort of thing. Uh, and so this is just naturally interesting to us and the people that watch our, our videos. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I guess you're probably into genealogy a little bit too, huh? I am. I've always liked history and I always wonder where I came from in the early 2000s. I started doing some genealogy. I'm an occupational therapist and therapist and a patient had kind of got me into it and told me where to start looking for stuff. And then couple well about four years ago started doing more to try to get into the daughters of the american revolution and found out more about my family so but i've known about um, andrew jackson here for about 20 years and uh he's like i said he's my fourth great uncle my third great grandfather because you gotta add a great for your uncles right uh, is his brother and he was here in this battle as well his name was james morgan but and he's he survived. He survived, and he, his son, and Lieutenant Jack's son were taking POW. About a month after the battle, they swore an oath of allegiance to the Union and were released and came back home to Cleveland County, Alabama. Really? Yes. Okay. That is incredible. So the so the reunion that'll be during the during the, the we'll reburial. We'll leave here and we'll go to the uh, reunion. That's site a family only you know, type thing. <laughs> I, mean, so, you know, I, was, I was gonna say, be careful, or you're gonna invite thousands. Crash the reunion. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely come for the the 
everything's open to the public to, yeah. actually, you know, and they're going to be doing the reenactment and the camp encampment and yeah. uh, the formal military funeral uh, with what they're telling me, uniformed guards, like 12 or 24 hours before the funeral, wow. and uh, so they'll have all that here. Well, thank you so yes. much for talking to us. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. If y'all can look behind him. That tent over there is actually where the body is being removed from. We're being very respectful and we're staying way back and out of the way. But we did want to document this and show y'all because we know that the people that watch our stuff, yeah. they, they love history and this is definitely a part of it. Can you kind of give us a rundown of what's yeah. going on? This is very historic. This is one of the last Civil War soldiers ever to be killed uh, west, I'm sorry, east of the Mississippi River. So now there's there's different conflicting reports of who actually was the last where the actual last battle was and who was the actual last person killed. But at very least, this is one of the last Confederate soldiers ever killed in the war uh, during actual conflict. So do we know what year? Or no? uh, yeah, it was uh, sixty four. Or, I'm sorry, sixty five. Okay. And uh, that's you had to. Look there's a monument so. right here. Okay. Um, but it's right at the end of the war. We're talking the last few weeks of the war in uh, 1865. And they went from here on to Anniston, and we've all metal detected this. Scott and I, we've got a video uh, that was filmed just down the road there. Yeah, we're um, we're literally we're in the middle of BFE, y'all. Like we're in yeah. the middle of nowhere, in the middle of cow pasture land. But there was obviously there was soldier activity here. Right. There was a skirmish here. It wasn't a, it wasn't a full fledged battle or anything like that. It was just a skirmish. Okay. Uh, one one person was killed, my understanding, and just had a few shots fired, and they gave up. But you had home guard from the Confederate soldiers, right? And they were basically overwhelmed with battle-hardened, overwhelming force, uh, and they scattered into the woods. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. that makes sense. So, like I said, this is kind of new to me. They just let me come be be here, which is good enough for me. I don't know the history of it, and I figured who better to tell you than Heath because he's been around <laughs> here looking. Now you said yeah. that they have got down to the right spot where they're seeing stuff right they've actually uh they've actually recovered the remains or are recovering the remains they have skeletal remains uh i've seen pictures of the buttons they've got pictures of the buttons they won't let you over there to film and understandably we didn't, right. we didn't want to out of respect right. for the soldier and his family and his family is over there by the way for the recovery oh wow uh but they found a round ball and what was interesting from us that has studied history was most of the Union troops by late in the war were using carbines or at least they had the three ringers. This was a round ball oh, and wow. it, was, it was lodged in his femur is what they were telling so us. So friendly fire or? We, we, I mean, you know, you'll never be able to say for sure, but uh, it was a round ball and <laughs> it was found in the area where they said that uh, the wound occurred in his leg and they found wow. the round ball. Look at this guy, he cleans up nice. Yeah, uh, if you guys don't recognize him, that's Scott <laughs> Duncan. He's normally in dirty clothes digging. He don't have a hat on, I don't know. I don't know how yeah. to feel about this. But yeah. no, in all seriousness, uh, you know, it's not really a joking matter what's going on here. And like I said, we are trying to be very respectful. But there yeah. again, with something as monumental as this, it's historic. It, it's, historic. it's worth y'all seeing. Uh, I mean, we're within 50 steps of where they're they're finding artifacts, and, they're, and there's a body. And I mean, and there's just so much history. Just if you were to drive through this town and look at it without the monuments here, you would have no idea what was going on without delving into the history of it. And this may be the last time anybody will see a Confederate soldier uh, disinterred. Wow. I mean, it, there's not a lot of unknown graves left, and the ones that are unknown are probably in the woods that may never be found. Right. But uh, they're going to get him a proper uh, place uh, to be laid to rest now. It was literally right in their front yard of that house, so they yeah. just about probably put the foundation on him. Well, I'm back from the dig and I found something that was very strange and something I want to share with you. We were shown the musket ball that killed the soldier and it wasn't a carbine round. It was a round ball, much like this, almost identical to this round ball I'm holding in my hand. Now we were asked out of respect to the family not to show it 
and we're not going to. We're not going to show the, the remains or we're not going to show the musket ball that actually killed him. However, it raised some question in our eyes, and it's something that we shared with the Sons of Confederate Veterans guys out there, as well as the archaeologists. And that is one thing. The Union Army that these Confederate soldiers were facing was cavalry, and it was extremely late war. Most of these soldiers are known to have the Spencer rifles, and that round is significantly different. And anybody that's watched our channel and watched us recover those Spencer rounds knows it looks nothing like a round ball. What we do know from history is that those round balls were often used in case shot or canister shot or occasionally fired out of 69 caliber muskets. Now, I didn't get to measure that round. It appeared to be 58 to me, but it could have been 69. Either way, I don't think that's something the Union Cavalry had at that time, or at least was widely in use. Now, this is something that we can only speculate on, and we'll never know for sure because we were not there. However, I strongly suspect that this soldier could have been killed from friendly fire. And in the fog of battle, it's regrettable. It still happens today, but it raises questions. It also raises the issue of what else is there that may support this. We've talked to the mayor of the city of Mumford, and we're in the process of trying to work out a recovery effort, at least on city property that they have, to try to establish more about this skirmish. Be sure to subscribe. If this is something you're interested in and you want to see follow-ups on it, be a subscriber here and also leave a comment below. Let us know if this is something you're interested in us following up with. Either way, we're going to be out there trying to recover history. Everything found in this area is going to be turned over to the city of Mumford, and they have indicated they would like to start some sort of museum there, and we're going to assist them in that effort. I want to commend the Sons of the Confederate Veterans, specifically Camp 454, which I also plan to join to be a member of. They work tirelessly to make sure that this soldier, his memory was preserved and also his remains were respected. Guys, a big hats off. You did a great job. Also, I want to thank the Buttram family. They, through their tireless research and genealogy, located a lot of information and assisted in the efforts to recover and find the actual grave site of this soldier and find his final resting place in a place of honor where he can be respected and people can visit and pay their respects there. Thank you guys. You did a great job and you're to be commended for it. And we appreciate you letting us be a part of it. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next episode of History Seekers. Take care.